Are we live? Yeah, are we are. I am. <laughs> Wait, we are. All right, ready? All right. I think we made it. <laughs> we let's tell them the truth, shall we? Let's well, tell absolutely, them the truth. absolutely. I mean, it's, it's live. It's live. We it's actually a live just show. Um, attempted to do our pre-show, and we are ironing out the kinks of our very first show for Smart Real Estate Live. Um, every week, we're going to have a ten-minute pre-show, and actually, our pre-show is now cut to what three minutes? Oh, yeah. wait. Is, what time is it's, it? I, you know, it's, you know what's weird is that. It's it said that we were streaming. Yeah. And, uh, oh, we are. Oh, we there are. we are. Right. Okay, there we're we live. Are. We're live. <laughs> okay, that was close. That was a close one. All right, so, so. <laughs> welcome to live TV. This is our pre-show, and uh, for our very first show, we are just going to be streaming live on Facebook. Uh, we've been working on this project for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we um, went from we went from we went from literally like making phone videos, yeah, right? like yeah, all the Facebook with the live videos, with our iPhones. and, and the, goal, the goal was to take and create something really special mm -hmm. that no one's ever done before in the real estate industry that we've seen. Uh, we did a ton of research. We're, we want to give everybody answers to the questions that they have right here, right now. Right. So I am um, out there in the world practicing real estate. That's what I do full time. It's my passion. And so I'm hearing questions all the time. What's happening um, in the market, uh, Talia? You know, what, should we sell now or should we sell in spring? Should we buy now or should we buy in spring? So whatever the questions are that we're hearing weekly, um, and at, and at any given uh, day and time, yeah. we're gonna do a show about that. Yeah. And, uh, and we put a lot of great stuff together. We really did, and, and we, we we built this like this whole studio. You know, we felt it was appropriate to. Um, do it on a really professional level. You know what I mean? Like we went from level one to level four. We did. We did, which is crazy. So like level one is, is basically in in the world of live streaming, there are some really talented professionals out there. He knows like, all about the world of live streaming. So so, but I wouldn't without these professionals, That's right? True. And these relationships. Yeah, so a people like Luria Luria Petrucci and uh, David Foster. I mean, there's so many people out there that are amazing at this. And um, so they have this model where they say that there's four levels of live streaming. One is using your phone, which is what most people do. Two, two is when you get your phone yep. and you add some equipment to it and things like that. Three. Hey, remember, does anybody remember my first uh, Facebook live I do. video? I do. <laughs> we had pause there. It was great. I'm it like, was. are we live? <laughs> it was. It was amazing. And uh, it, you know, and that's and that's the beauty of live. <laughs> you have to start somewhere. That's the beauty of live is that it's it's real, you yeah. know. And uh, mm -hmm. and and we realize that people are tired of being sold. You know Absolutely. I mean? Like the commercials on TV. Everywhere the, you go. You can't watch your favorite show unless you remember to DVR it because right. they won't even let you fast forward through the commercials. Right. Like and billboards even a, but on even the a, side of your internet, right? Even in real and estate, everything. right? Yeah. Like like the, the ads, like the TV ads, the radio it's, it's ads. It's everywhere. <laughs> and you don't really know who you're dealing with. You know what I mean? You see you see a billboard or you, you see a, you hear a radio commercial and it all sounds great and obviously those people have money to create that stuff, but at the end of the day, you really don't know who you're dealing with and you don't have a chance to engage. Exactly. You know, if we're this this idea kind of morphed from I read a book, it was called Outrageous Authenticity, and it was talking about how with everybody being inundated from advertisements, the only way that your business is truly gonna be successful is to really show people who you are mm -hmm. and just embrace your authenticity. Right. And I came to Carl with an idea. Um, with him, you know, he, um, he and I, background quick. Oh yeah, that's yeah. That's we sure. we no, went toe to toe. Sure. We were, he was my nemesis. <laughs> we were always friends. We had um, a friendly competition at our office. One year I'd be the top agent um, with listings, he'd be the top in sales. The next year it'd be the reverse. And we went back and forth at, at Keller Williams. Uh, we support one another. We ha it's a it's a um, comfortable atmosphere to share ideas, yeah. and it was it was a friendly competition. Yeah, I mean and we've known each other a long time. Yeah, you know if you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Since 2006. Right? I know. So yeah. so so like one year she'd be the number one agent in the office, and then the next year I'd be the number one agent in the office. <laughs> and like literally for so like close. five years, there was just this literally back and forth, and and you know they'd be but like. But he's a creative type. He yeah. he really became passionate. The complete um, strangers, real estate agents, were calling him about his listings and saying, oh my gosh, who did your photography? And he was like, I did. And before you knew it, so many people were hiring him, uh, and I started hiring Carl to photograph my listings professionally. Um, he uses the drone, the metaphor, all that stuff. Um, for several years and I came to him with this idea and uh, it just morphed into he came up with actually doing yeah. the live stream because of his former radio she came show. to me she came to me about a year ago and, and, and I've, been, I mean, I've been shooting all your listings for like going, Two and on, and a half years. Yeah, going on three years yeah so you know the the listing photography <laughs> turned into listing photography and then it turned into aerial photography yeah, and, and then, then it turned into, the then it turned into <laughs> Matterport <laughs> photography with 3d tours then it was then it was video so we do video all that yeah. yeah I mean we do all that and so we've been he, doing all he that took together time to go 
and even um, on Zillow, he would come with me with Zillow. Um, you can actually, as a premier agent, we can upload video walkthroughs of our listings. However, it has to be after it's already on the market. So he would come back after the fact. Right. We shot some great footage for our gross point listings because each of the gross points has their own uh, separate park. And um, we would go to the parks and shoot footage of that. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> and so, so we've done that for a couple of years. And so she came to me last year and she said, you know, I really want to start doing more marketing videos. And I'm like, awesome. I love doing that. I do it all the time. I have lots of clients. Why don't you let people know who we are yeah. and what's going on? Yeah. And so we started doing it and we, we put together some great stuff. I mean, it was a lot of fun, but mm -hmm. she's one of the top real estate agents in the state of Michigan. And so so obviously Aww, she's extremely thanks. busy. Well, you are. I mean, you are. She has a team. She's an amazing team. We have an amazing team. It's, and, we'll get, and we'll get to Shout all that. Shout out to you ladies. What's I know up? you're watching. Team, team Talia Kelly and Associates. So um, she has an amazing team of support staff and everything. And, and it's, They're great. It's really incredible to see what's been put together. So anyways, oh, it's awesome. she's crazy busy. And so getting getting like traditional video on a regular basis, we had like a weekly production schedule laid uh -huh. out and it just wasn't oh, working. Oh my gosh. It, it wasn't working. And that's it okay. Wasn't. That's yeah. okay. So, so ultimately what ended up happening was um, I have a, a broadcast background in radio. So when I when I was full time and I was one of the top agents in the state, I had two radio he had shows. A full blown radio station at our Keller I Williams did. office on ten to ninety four. Been streaming since two thousand eight. Yeah. You know, but I, it was we all started audio. at that Keller Williams office when it was uh, re relatively new. Yeah. Uh, I think it was about, open. It was like a maybe, year and a half. Maybe, maybe yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah two thousand and six. So. So anyway, <laughs> so she came to me with a video idea. We started working on it. We did some great stuff for client appreciation planning and all that oh whatnot. My gosh, it was so but much to, fun. To do the he stuff that out. we really want to thank you, but to do the stuff we really wanted to do, which was educational stuff that really helps people. Absolutely. You know, not marketing, not sales, not commercials, not, no. oh, this is Talia and I'm amazing. It's no. about like, what, what Giving questions? Giving value back to yeah. our clients, yeah. to our future clients, to our fans, anybody that happens to be tuning in and wants to know what's happening in, in real estate. One of the things that I'm so excited about, so passionate about with this show is Carl actually came up with the idea to do the show live. Um, not, you're seeing because, it, we're not editing it, and because, we want to be able to take questions from people. If but somebody, because the video wasn't working, right? So I was like, true. I got They're, a crazy idea, and she's like, uh -oh. I was like, I love this, but some of our clients they weren't really too excited about having a camera there, right. and I thought, you know what? At the end of the day, the most important thing to myself is to build relationships with our clients. We're right. always striving to do that better. We're all human beings, we all make mistakes. Sometimes I know with how busy I am, I can drop the ball on my communication. That's one of the number thing, one things that we're working on for 2018. Uh, because we take into account constructive criticism. Sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to build relationships and we want people to know and understand real estate and understand just because, you know, there's all this information out oh there with gosh. Zillow and, and public records. Uh, the consumers have access to a lot of, pretty much most of the same information that we do. Right. But the true real estate professional takes that information and then finds out, analyzes how it's going to pertain yeah. to your specific market and yeah. give it back to you in a way that you can make educated decisions. Right. And um, it, so it's, I've been embracing everything that's going yeah. on when a lot of people are like, oh, they're, you know, these different types of uh, mediums are going to put real estate agents out of business. Yeah. Not well, the good ones. It's not. It's not because of the good ones interpret the data. WebMD did not put doctors out of business. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> that's what the show is all about. It's going to be a weekly show, weekly show, helping people, really what's... interpreting the information. The questions that I'm hearing on a daily basis. Because right. I'm out there in the world usually other than this. I am selling real estate. I work primarily with sellers. Um, I, I use uh, some sh uh, great showing assistants who will help open doors for my sellers that are then buying and I'll negotiate the contracts. I have a lead buyers agent, Danielle, who works only with buyers. She's phenomenal. She's been with me for almost four years. I, I don't know what I'd do without her. Our transaction coordinator, Nicole, um, she handles everything from contract to close. Once the file's under contract, she's amazing. When I was brand new in real estate, <laughs> Nicole was working with our um, broker owner, um, our operating principal at the time, and I'd see her at the copy machine, and any of you real estate agents that are watching that know the disc profile, I'm a high I, which means I am um, very outgoing. So she I likes, try, wait, I, wait, no, it means she likes to have fun. That, like that's what it fun. means. That's just right to the chase. She, she likes to laugh. She likes to have fun. So. Hey, hey, our, our brand is smart fun real estate. Exactly. We and have so, no problem bringing out the fun, and that was the other essence yes, of the show, right? Yes, it's exactly. Like showing people yes. that we are smart. We know what's happening in the market. We can educate you. But anyways, back to my story. Real quick, because uh, we're going to start the show. 36 seconds. 36 seconds. Nicole, I try and engage her in conversation at the copy machine. And I just thought, she doesn't really like me that much. But no, <laughs> Nicole is uh, very dedicated to doing her job. She and is. Um, when my amazing broker, who was a, a mentor, a friend, um, 
it hel helped me grow up in real estate, grow up in this business. I like to say I grew up in real estate because I got into it in my, you know, late tw 20, at 29. So I'm, I'm aging myself. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, once he decided to take a step back and um, hand his business off to his amazing daughter, Rachel, if you're watching, I love you. Um, you know, I, Nicole was looking for a full-time position and I hired her, so I got And she's things. awesome. She has an amazing team. So our time is up on the pre-show. Pre and we actually up. went a little long because we had some technical we, yeah, difficulties in the beginning, but that's 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 live. So now we're gonna actually start the show show. Show show. So, so here we are. I'm Talea. And I'm Carl. And so today's show, what's what's today's show really gonna be about? What are we gonna we talk about? We are uh, talking about why um, somebody would maybe want to sell their house now versus selling in spring. What are the pros and cons of selling now? What are the pros and cons of selling in spring? In spring? And there's a lot of questions there, on there. There really that. are. Yeah. I mean, people are scared. And, and truly, it, it really is up to you. They're, yeah. Depending on your specific situation, your timelines, um, what you're thinking that you want to do afterwards, it, it really is... Um, it's gonna be a great time to sell now if it's right for you. It's gonna be a great time to sell in the spring if that's right for you. And we're gonna get into all the details of mm -hmm. that through Absolutely. the show, right? And we're gonna cover mm -hmm. some really specific stuff. And I think you lined up, you've got seven, if I saw it correctly when I was looking through the market stuff mm -hmm. or the show seven stuff. Seven insider secrets. Seven insider um, secrets for sellers yeah, and, yep. five, and five tips for buyers that are Absolutely. thinking about getting into the market right now and, mm -hmm. and why it can be a really great time to buy. And honestly, when I was looking at the stats that you put together and stuff like that, it's really compelling, and we'll get to that in just a second. But um, you know, the reality of it is, is that there's a lot of questions. We're gonna try to provide the answers, and we want to engage with you guys. We want you to ask questions live. So if you have any questions, or if you know anyone that's got questions, share the show with them. Share the link on Facebook right now. We'd love to take their questions live and, uh, and Carl, make sure that they're Carl's gonna be watching with the questions and any questions mm -hmm. that were to come in. Um, we can read them on um, live on yeah, streaming sure. here on yeah. the air and uh, take them. <laughs> that would be fun. It would be fun. Hey. All right. <laughs> if you're watching. You have questions. Write them in. Right. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started with the show. I'm Talia. And I'm Carl. And we are here to help you buy and sell real estate with confidence. Without feeling lost in the process. <laughs> and this, this is Smart, Smart Real Estate, real estate Live. Life. <laughs> All right, here hey, we are. Everybody, we're back. <laughs> For okay. anybody that's just tuning in, we just wrapped up our 10-minute pre-show. Um, my name is Talea. And I'm Carl Eschenberg. And we are going to be um, hosting the show every week starting at 1. However, every week we have a 10-minute pre-show that we just wrapped up. Mm -hmm. And um, for anybody that's just tuning in, today's episode is going to be about the pros and cons of selling real estate now or selling in the spring versus, um, uh, or as well as buying or selling in the spring, pros and cons for both. So. And the show is live, so you know you're getting the <laughs> right information. So There's no if editing. I get tripped this up on my words, we, did, we, we are just talking we live. We didn't want to do a TV commercial where it was scripted and everything's yeah. perfect and she's walking through the office and because that's not how it is. I'm not reading anything on it's a not, teleprompter. Yeah, it's not like that. So we're going to take questions live. If you have any yeah. questions, just type them right in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to be on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube by the, you know within the next month or so. Yeah, we by the beginning of the year we want to be streaming live on all three of those platforms. We need to actually up the bandwidth a little bit in our studio. I have to give mad props real quick though to yeah. Carl because he rocked it out helping to um, build out this studio. I think one of these days we need to show them this the uh, sped up footage. We can do that. We can do that for sure. I took video of the whole thing as we were building it out, and thanks to Anthony Tranchita for yes, all your help, bro. Anthony, if you're like, watching, no, Anthony's watching. Honest to God, with, with the physical build out and stuff, it was uh, like I would be so far behind right now if I didn't have you helping. And, yeah. and, and honestly. It came together. It did. It came together we, really we well. We went from level one to level four. We did. We did. We did. So if you <laughs> want to stay uh, updated on what's going on in the real estate market, we're going to be doing the show yep. every week. Every single week. Every Thursday at one. Yep. So if you just type show, show in the comments, 
you'll right. get you'll get a real time notification every week right before we go live. So you'll get like a notification ten mm -hmm. minutes before the show. All you have to do is right now underneath the show that you're watching live in the comments, just type the word show, mm -hmm. and uh, from then on you're gonna get uh, a reminder of when the show is going live. Right, and we'll be talking about different topics every week. Right, we've yeah. got a fifty two week production mm -hmm. schedule laid out, so we already know what the topics are, but we're also open to suggestions. Right, well, and these topics are you know based on since you know, I've been in real estate full time since two thousand and six, and you had been in real estate for what another ten since years the, before since that. Since the late nineties. Yeah. We we just you know at this time of year every one of our potential clients is always asking us what is the benefit to selling now what is the benefit until waiting until mm -hmm. spring because there's that mindset of oh my gosh you know all the buyers come out in the spring and then we have a lot of sellers that will want to get a jump on the spring rush um, and, and and put their houses up for sale maybe in February yep. which is another you know great thing to do however I think. These stats are, you know, they're self-explanatory. There's yeah. great benefits to selling right now. They really they're, are. There really you, is. You want to just so. dive into that right Let's now? Let's dive into it. All right, so here's... We, you want to talk about the market activity real quick? Or? Well, well, yeah, well, you know, when I looked at your stats, when I looked at the stats you had put mm -hmm. together, I was really impressed because, again, the show is about whether you should wait until spring or buy or sell now. And and there's a lot of people that, um, that have a lot of questions. And there's a lot of people that are misinformed. Like, they Absolutely. really don't understand what's going on. And, you know, we've been doing this for a long mm -hmm. time, so... If we don't get a chance to talk to you and tell you the straight dope on it, well, and what's it can really be going on? It can be confusing because a lot of people will kind of just do their own research and they'll mm -hmm. be looking at these um, third-party sites that um, I, I've come to embrace. You Getting know, this Zillow. estimate. Yes, yes. <laughs> this estimate. But not only that, just looking at the market trends. And I, I even had some clients recently. I don't know if you guys are tuning in, but we're they're actually um, preparing their home for sale right now. Um, quick plug, it's an absolutely beautiful colonial uh, in Shelby Township, Utica School. Schools and uh, they're updating the kitchen because kitchens and bathroom sell homes. Great granite countertops are going in. Yep. Um, but that house is going to be um, in the high 270s, four bedrooms, great family home. Uh, Maybe it'll be a featured listing on a future show. It will be. Absolutely. Yeah, it, we, we're going to be doing a featured listing and some featured buyers on every episode. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. Um, but, you know, so they're, they're the ones who specifically asked me, and I had just mentioned this to Carl when we were talking about what we wanted to do for our very first show. And because so many people right now, now that the summer's over, we have a big rush in summer. You know, in Michigan, we have four seasons for anybody that's tuning in from out of state. We have, you know, it, people want to move when it's warmer, and right. they also want to move before school starts. But the problem with that is everybody wants everybody. to Everybody. So yeah. everybody there's, wants to sell during that time. There's a lot time. of competition. Everybody wants to buy during that time. So it doesn't matter whether you're a buyer or a seller. You've got a lot I've more competition. I've had so many clients that when I did, when I like, you know, real estate lingo comped out their house, when I did a comparative market analysis for them in December or January, and I told them I could get you this price right here because there's no competition, and these are the comparables that we will present to the appraiser that I feel most um, strongly supports your value. Um, they say, oh, you know, we have to do some things. And, and every single time, every single time, I have very clear cut examples of people that ended up waiting until um, May, you know, right before the summer or even late April to put their homes up for sale that all of a sudden, a, a very specific example was a, a higher end condominium um, that was a newer built um, construction project a, a couple years ago. Um, I told them that, you know, if we price the house um, in the mid 200s, mm -hmm. you know, right now, this is what, and all of a sudden, when we put it up for sale, another six or seven of them yeah. went up for sale at the exact same time. It so happens. It's it all happens. about the law of supply People and demand. It. And, you know, and the other group that joins in, right, right is the for sale by owners. So right. a lot of for sale Absolutely. by owners, they will wait until they see houses going up in their neighborhood. And as soon as they see one pop and they know that people are listing, mm -hmm. they're, they're actually a lot of times ahead of the curve because they've been thinking about it for a while. Then all of a sudden they go for sale by owner and now there's, and so there's a lot more competition. So the really cool thing when I was looking at the stats that you prepared, I mm -hmm. was impressed because there's a lot of really great information um, in there about, um, you know, winter selling and, and what that looks like. And, oh and my some gosh, of stuff. one of the, I, can I just skip real quick to one sure. of the things I absolutely love about um, putting your home up for sale. Can I interrupt before? you for one second yes. since we're live? <laughs> yes. Just scoot over a little bit that way so oh, you're not oh. getting, there we go. I don't, oh. want to, I don't want your hair getting cut off. There we go. Oh, all right. oh I, picture in picture. I it's crazy. You guys can see it, but I can't because I'm looking at the She's camera. never seen any of <laughs> this. Uh, she thing. was she was gone to Florida. I got everything. We I went on vacay we and I the, gave Carl we finished the, the build, build uh, out. key to the studio and uh, that we were, we off have our races. little studio here and yeah, it's off to the races. So anyway, so so market so activity. Things, yes. Well, first one thing that I wanted to say really quick because a lot of people are are planning on um, you know decorating for the holidays. I absolutely love 
that during the holidays, you don't even have to stage your house. You don't? It's, you really don't? It's already done for you, especially here in Southeastern, well, in Michigan, anywhere in the, you know, um, place, you know, any place where they have four seasons and you're decorating specifically for the seasons, even if it's not necessarily for Christmas, right. just for the seasons. Wh whatever you know? the holiday is, whatever, the, just for the seasons, like whether it's Changing Halloween, the colors. Thanksgiving, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, it's like you're automatically staged. Yeah. You know, when you're living there, I had a, a property and, and I absolutely love these clients. I sponsored their softball team. I don't know if they're tuning in or not right now, but um, they'll definitely see this <laughs> later on. Um, I, I had a uh, price out their house during um, I think it was like late July early August and there was a ton of competition and the zip code that they're in they um, it, there was a lot of homes that are newer built and their house was a colonial and it was on the smaller side they bought the house when they first got married wow. and um, they had children and they needed uh, more square footage that's one of the triggers so Mar marriage and children I had told them I said based on the comparables that we have right now, we'll probably get anywhere from, it's gonna appraise somewhere between 197 and 201. So I suggested listing at 199.9. They decided to wait. We listed it in December. There was no competition. Right. We ended up selling the house. Um, I don't have it in front of me. It was either 210 or 215. You got in a competitive bid situation. You took the photos, yeah. remember? It yeah. was um, on Autumn Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. we ended up with a bidding war, and uh, we did find a buyer that, because they were moving from out of state, they, they needed a home. Right. They said, if you sell us this house, we'll be willing to pay up to several thousand dollars above the appraised value, because they, they really wanted it, and there was a lack of competition. And if you look Look at the stats, the the numbers that you provided, like that first oh, slide that you got. Yeah, through? absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, okay. There you go. So, like that. This is this is. Th Look at this spike right here. Look I know at the spike in January. But the, always. That well, that's actually average price per square foot, right? So mm -hmm. you know, if you look at that, it's just it's been going up since 2014. It's law of supply and demand. It really is. And so every and so we're gonna get to another slide. The one I love the ones that you the next two that you oh, provided because you know what? Before we switch over though, I I was telling that story about the clients that um, I'm working with right now. He he's an engineer, and I I love working with my engineers. Um, they are very analytical, and so I took my time to really, I, I said in what, I think 15 attachments <laughs> um, with everything going on in the market. And it's so Yeah, there was really a lot of attachments in that he, email. He, he, he was concerned. I sent it to Carl because I said, I want to I want to talk about this upcoming listing that we have. And um, it was, there was probably about 15 attachments, and he was concerned because he had seen this drop in October. Right. And the reason being is because What's happening is there's that lull after all the people that were selling before school started, and then all of a sudden we get a spike again for yep. all of the people that want to close before the holidays. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you look, yeah, look at that's that's what's amazing. Right, right? here. Oh so, yeah, they can see it. Okay. Yeah. So like this this is this is average sale price, and if it's, you look at that giant spike, it's that's huge. That's December, and that's yeah, and that's every year. So even in 2016, you can see it yep. too. Yep. Um, not quite as pronounced. It's um, crazy. Uh, it's crazy. It's going from 2015 to 2016. It's going from 2016 to 2017. But this is but, a great example. But here we are. Look at the edge of it, it for right. coming up now. And, and There's that drop for October. That's right. Yep. Right and then, there. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to spike and again. And then it's going to spike again. And that's a great example of the misinformation mm -hmm. that's out there. A lot of people think, oh, December's a horrible time to sell your house. But because it, they're looking in October. So if they're thinking, I want to close by the, the holidays, a mm -hmm. lot of people, they look in the beginning of October and they see this big, huge huge downturn they're like oh maybe this is the wrong thing to do and that's why it takes a competent real estate agent who's been in this industry yep. watching these trends to, to, to show you that you know what the truth just ignore that the yeah. truth and, and statistically a lot of people don't realize this but about five to six percent of all the homes sold in Michigan every year mm -hmm. actually sell in December and, and and so we're gonna get into a lot mm -hmm. of the details about motivation and stuff like that in a few minutes mm -hmm. but that I mean that graph when you when I saw that when you sent that to me and I saw it I was like wow that's really telling and it really supports what there's, we're doing. there's several different things that can really affect the market that people don't really necessarily take into account. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, the seasons for sure. Mm -hmm. The holidays for sure. When school's starting for sure. A lot of people aren't thinking about uh, that homestead exemption. Right. Well, in, in Michigan, yeah. you know, we're one of the few places in Southeast Michigan where we're paying our taxes in advance. Exactly. A lot of um, municipalities, pretty mm -hmm. much the rest of the country, most of it, pays their taxes in arrears. They do. So for us, you know, it's it's huge. We have a huge um, amount of closings in that, you know, the last week, a uh, couple weeks in May because right. that homestead um, deadline is June 1st right. for that really high um, July tax belt. You, usually, the tax bill in July is the higher one. It there is. are a couple of municipalities, you know, it, 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 around it varies, here that right? it varies. But yeah. 
we have so many, and people don't think about that, and that's, you know, something else to take into account when you're thinking about buying or selling. So we're going to dive into all of that. Absolutely, we're going to ideas, but mm-hmm. here, and this, this, this was my favorite, new listings, because it supports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It totally supports. If you look at this graph, and uh, here, I'll just, I'll go full screen with it. If you look at this graph. Welcome to our live TV. <laughs> all right, so if you look at this graph, um, if you, this is from 2014 and 2017, uh-huh. and again, when you sent this to me, I was like, this is perfect, because. Yep you see at the end of the year, the listings drop off. That's because everyone's pulling it off the market because they think it's a bad idea to sell during the holidays. Right. But, oh my gosh, and your house is staged already. Yeah, it's so yeah. beautiful. So you literally have a graphical representation of less inventory, right. which mm-hmm. creates higher prices. Absolutely. Which is an amazing scenario. And then again, mm-hmm. if you take into account that about five to 6% of all houses in Michigan, that's the whole state. If right. they, you know, they sell in the month of December, you know, that's a huge deal. Right, considering there's 12 months. So yeah. that, you know, you think might think five to 6% doesn't sound very high, but there's 12 months in a year. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Yeah, it really is. It really is. <laughs> and so you, you get this massive dip in inventory, which creates less competition. And then you have a mm-hmm. spike in prices because of that, because right. you can actually ask Lots for more. Demand, because always. the buyers yep. are super mm-hmm. motivated, right? Absolutely. And so there's a lot going on there. There's well, a lot of Well, think about that, though. The buyers... The buyers that are out looking in homes with, you know, six inches of snow, what? they 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 don't want to be driving through that and with their kids, and and it gets dark early, uh, really early. They they are not out there like a lot of other buyers in yeah. this middle of summer. Oh, it's fun. There's an open house. Let's yeah. stop by. Um, you well, know, we, but you, you get the tire and, kickers too. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The buyers that are shopping for homes in the middle of the winter are definitely serious buyers. You're not they, getting tire kickers. It's, it's not your neighbor coming <laughs> to check out your furniture. <laughs> No, they don't, they'd rather be in front of their own fireplace than right. their own furniture. In, 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 the, in the summer, it's a little bit right. different. But yeah, so I mean, so these numbers are really telling and they really they support really everything yeah. that's that, that's, that's going on. So why don't, can you go to the next slide? Yeah. So um, so you've got seven winter seller secrets that you put together. Let's just go through them real quick. All right, you let's want to? Yeah, let's for do sure. it. Okay. So the first one, we just mentioned that already, um, serious buyers. Uh, yeah. I think enough said. We already yeah. touched on that topic. I mean, they're stuff. serious. They're not out there because they want to be. Right. They're out there because they need to be. So maybe it's a job reload. Less competition. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a couple different um, facets to this uh, the, to this slide that I'd like to dive into. There's there's a lot of reasons for less competition. It's not just because people think, oh, there's less buyers out in the spring. There's a lot of homeowners. This this is not to homeowners use bricks and sticks. This is not an, a financial decision. This is a very emotional decision decision for our home sellers. When I meet with potential sellers, I know that they've invested not only time um, and you know money into creating the the home that they've um, loved and lived in. There are a lot of memories there. Absolutely. There's you know this is the biggest investment of their life that they're selling, but also they they have an emotional attachment to it. They do. So I have to try to take the emotion out of it, look at it from um, a business perspective, but also keeping in mind and understanding that this is an, an emotional an emotional investment. Yeah. So yeah, you know really there's thinking about this and so they're thinking you know what I don't want people coming into my house that aren't gonna respect my home and right. take their shoes off and track snow through my house and yeah, whatever is important and, to them right yeah. there's a lot of people that just don't want to deal with having showings in the winter because mm-hmm. they're afraid that people are going to damage their home that they love right. and unfortunately Sometimes it happens. Yeah. However, our team, we make sure, um, <laughs> Kari, if you're watching, Kari loved the sign that we made for her house. It was a beautiful home that we sold um, a couple months ago in Washington Township. Mm-hmm. Um, 4,500 square foot home. Carl got to shoot it. We made gorgeous signs asking people to please remove their shoes um, or, you know, sometimes you know, the, the, we'll provide booties for people to put on in the winter um, just because a lot of the sellers are very concerned about that. But just there's just a lot of sellers that just don't want to deal with it right. and they won't well and the good news is that there's less competition on both sides of the fence so not only do you have less competition as a seller mm-hmm. but there's also less competition in buyers so if you're if you're worried about traffic or that's a concern for you honestly the winter can even, be a great yeah, time it's like, to even though there's a lot less buyers the buyers that are out there are so much more serious that's the thing right. so Let's head on to number three, early birds win. Um, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, do. they really it's, do. It's the early birds win. And since we're talking about cliches here, let's uh, just focus on two more that are absolutely true. Yeah. Um, you have to win the beauty pageant and the price war. That's right. That's, that's, that's real estate in a nutshell. Yeah, okay, we're done. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Yep. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Well, I guess we don't have to do the show anymore. You guys. That's, that's it. No, honestly. You know, we, buyers are shopping for homes the same way that we would shop for a brand new car. I went through this a, a year and a half ago I wasn't ready to buy a new car yet unfortunately I was in an accident 
Uh, but at, at any rate, um, I, I found all of the, the cars that I wanted. I, I knew that I definitely wanted an American um, made car. We're in the big three. Um, I knew that I wanted a higher end car than what I had. Um, I had a Ford Escape. I wanted to either get a Lincoln or a Cadillac. I definitely wanted the driver awareness package <laughs> after my accident. And uh, so I'm, I'm finding the color I want. And I'm putting all of these cars that are within a 100 mile drive into my favorites. And I probably had about 10. And I found the ones that were the best priced with the lowest miles. So just like real estate, you know, price per square foot, the best price, um, the newer the age, um, and the amenities that I wanted. Updated kitchen, you know, the driver awareness package is the same thing. And I went and I looked at the top five out of about 15 that I saved. Right. And I picked my car. Yeah, yeah. And that's what a lot of buyers are doing when they pick their house. They, yeah. well, they're going to save exactly. all these homes and their favorites. Actually. Us, but a good buyer's agent like Danielle on my team, she really digs deep with the buyers of what's important to them. Why mm -hmm. do they want to have a, a great room and just a um, breakfast nook instead of a you know family room, living room, mm -hmm. uh, formal dining? Right. What is it about their lifestyle that supports wanting that and and so it's you know important to ask a lot of questions we ask tons of questions when we're working with new clients and, and get to that because at the end of the day um you know we we definitely do not want to be showing somebody you know 15 houses no. we want to find the top five that are the absolute best um everything you want the best prices and most of the time the buyers are if we do the buyer's consultation properly the buyers are going to pick a home within and, the first five homes and here's the thing because the inventory is going to go up so dramatically in january right mm -hmm. because um the first week of january is the biggest month for expireds yep. because everybody that's been kind of sitting there maybe they're overpriced mm -hmm. or the houses hit you know they, well, they, they start a lot of people also up. have like uh, listings with their agents just expire at the end of the year so somebody might take a listing in january or, or sorry in uh june or july or even like November just say you know what let's just list it to the end of the year and see what happens right. so January 1st is the, the biggest day for expired listings but the bottom line is is that less demand during the months of December and January mm -hmm. means more money for you as a seller in general yeah, and, and so that's that the early bird wins if you get in the market sooner than everybody else there's still buyers out there you're gonna win right no matter what no matter what the faster you sell your house the more money you're gonna get that's right. and the less demand, the less competition, Absolutely. the higher price you're gonna get. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's basic economics, People right? are always gonna need to buy. They're yeah. moving here from out of state. Um, there's a lot of things happening with the big three. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things happening in downtown Detroit. Um, you know, uh, the Illich family and uh, uh, the other family. The Maroons? No. Oh. Uh, I, um, Dan Gilbert? Uh, yeah, Dan Gilbert. Dan Gilbert yeah. and the yeah. Illich family. They are buying up everything. Um, Woodward is so beautiful mm -hmm. now. I remember going to downtown Detroit as a kid. And outside of Greektown, it was dark. Yeah, it I was. remember about a year ago, for the first time, thinking to myself, oh my gosh, there are just lights everywhere. Yeah. I love being downtown. I love the energy. We shot our team photo shoot at the Aloft um, and the David Whitney building. Yeah. Um, what's the watch company that's Shinola. Shinola yeah. is opening up a hotel yeah. and all of the, uh, the real apparatus estate, room down there yeah, all of the, the real estate that is um, along that Woodward corridor as well as in Corktown and I think um, next is gonna be heading up Jefferson right. towards Gross Point yeah. Gross Point Park I think we're gonna see a, a big revival pretty yeah, soon I agree um, I agree but so the, the fourth thing I and mean, I, I thought this one was cute I, w I was laughing <laughs> Is, is if you yeah. sell now, then you're a power buyer. You are because you have no contingencies. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's true. That is, that is absolutely true. That's one of the biggest things that people wrestle with: is I should I sell that... now or buy first or sell first? And 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 the truth is, is that when you go to buy a house, if you're contingent, you you, you hurt you really hurt yourself from a Especially negotiation. If there's a multiple offer offer situation, so yeah. a real estate agent has what's called a fiduciary duty to their clients. And I always train everybody on my team, always remember who are you representing? If I'm representing the seller, my job is to get that seller the most money with the least hassle and the least amount of time. That's right. If I'm representing the buyer, my job is to get that buyer the best deal on the house with the least hassle, finding them the house that most correctly fits their needs and making sure that they're not overpaying or wasting money on an inspection or appraisal on a house that's not gonna appraise and negotiating a good deal for them for right. whatever their needs are. Right. We have to remember who we're representing. And um, you know, at the end of the day, um, whichever party we're representing, we're gonna do a good job to negotiate on their behalf. But mm -hmm. they, you know, somebody else that has a real estate agent yep. is going to be um, negotiating on their behalf. So And you never um, know who that person's gonna be right. or how you know 
But most of the time, we we have relationships with the other agents because we all want to win-win for our clients. We want our buyers and sellers to be happy. They want theirs to be happy. So if we can come up with a solution that's a win-win, I love that. That's part of our Keller Williams philosophy. Um, it's it's gonna everybody's gonna be happy at the closing. It, it, that's what we want. So, and that's really the key here. Is, right. Is, is it's a win-win as a seller right now because if you, because, you're gonna yeah, sell high because and then yeah. you can buy low. So when they when they actually sell their homes, a lot of the sellers are concerned. Well, you know, what if I can't find a house that I like because I'm I'm getting more money because of the lack of inventory. Well. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because I can't find a house now. Well, a lot of the times we have no problem negotiating for our sellers to stay in their home. And it's not necessarily renting back, but they're paying um, basically a, it's called a per diem, 1 30th of um, the principal interest taxes and insurance, right. the, the PITI payment um, per day to stay in the home yeah. so that they can then take their proceeds from the sale of their house and purchase another home. And I've had so many sellers, I can't even tell you guys, I've had so many clients that were worried that they were going to end up homeless because we got there. <laughs> so many of them. You know what's Dana, funny? Dana and Jay, if you're watching, we just went through this. So many of them, um, literally recently, quite a few of our clients were worried because we sold their houses quickly for top dollar, got it to appraise, and then they didn't have a house that they liked. But because we got them 45 or 60 days in the house afterwards, they are able to then find a house the and then yep. being what we call the power buyer, now they don't have to sell their home. Right. It's closed. Yep. They have the funds in the bank. Yep. They're ready to go. Non -contingent. It's not contingent. contingent on selling their current home. Which is a very powerful position it to be in. It really is yeah. because at the end of the day, a good listing agent, somebody working with a seller is going to say, okay, these people may be willing to pay $5,000 more. They may be willing to um, have a shorter inspection period, whatever the case may be. However, if the underlying transaction on their house falls through, there's nothing they can do and the deal's not gonna go through. So bottom they, line, yeah. buy, buy low and sell high. Yeah. And in, in December and January, you really have an opportunity to do that as a seller. Absolutely. All right, so what's next? Okay, what's next? Um, <laughs> the, force <laughs> <laughs> the force is strong. May the real estate force be with you. <laughs> But really, I mean, taxes are a power, a powerful motivating force. Absolutely, they really it, are. It is, yep. And actually, we talked about the um, taxes a little bit, but we did. there are tax um, ramifications. We'll probably have to do a whole show on that because that's pretty complicated I think stuff. We definitely, I think we need a tax professional on there. Yeah. We're we're not allowed to give that's legal right. advice or accounting advice. It's uh, against uh, the board of ethics. So, but the bottom, but the bottom line is, as a seller, there's some tax advantages to selling before the end of the year. Absolutely, and and, and yep. for not not for all sellers, but for a lot of for sellers, of and if it fits your situation i mean i think it's a powerful yeah, motivator so it definitely is. so that's a huge motivation to get things done now oh the relocation secret you know what people don't people don't get this you hear people talk about relocation all the time but this but, is one you know thing. what there's something else though too that i want to mention um and because we're talking about pros and cons of buying and selling in the winter versus spring i do want to mention a pro to waiting to sell in spring on based on this relocation secret while a lot of the, um, you know, it, it's a traditional month for employees um, to start new jobs, um, relocation clients a lot of times will start at the beginning of the year um, mm -hmm. and, and people that are going, especially um, 1099 people, they, they love to start at the beginning of the year. So that's it's one full year that they're 1099 versus maybe W2 the year before. Um, you know, it's something that a lot of people don't realize we work with a ton of um, new doctors and residents. I don't know if Dr. Drew, uh, we we got we have worked with some great clients this summer that were relocating here from Washington, and we affectionately called our our doctor uh, Dr. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> he was cool with it. Um, and uh, it, every year in in March they call it D. It's kind of called uh, D Day uh, amongst those in the know is when all of the new um, doctors are finding out where they're going to do their right. residency yep. so a lot of them when they finish their med medical schooling they're applying to three or four different places for residency that are maybe their top three or four and um, they find out in March where they're going to end up going and there's a brilliant program it's called the physician's loan program and we're gonna do a whole show on that. we're gonna do a whole show on that but just real quickly you know it's it's based on what doctors and, and surgeons are going to be making down the road mm -hmm. they don't take into account their um, student loans into their debt to income ratio right and so that's another thing to keep in mind you know for sellers that if they are waiting until spring right. if they're near a hospital that's a major hospital such as McLaren or st. John's on Morrison mm -hmm. Mac these hospitals employ 
tons of new residents right. and so it's a great opportunity to tap into that market and there's other mm-hmm. remotes right so you've got people mm-hmm. working at TACOM, people working at the you know all, uh-huh. the, all the different Tacom, military facilities yeah, you've general got general dynamics where my sister-in-law works you've got and, automotive yep. relocations i yep. mean there's and what people don't understand is is and i mean a lot of people don't get this as mm-hmm. sellers right yep. is that january is usually the month that most t- companies you know mm-hmm. target to make that happen and yeah. and they back them so from a financing yeah. perspective, a lot of them are yeah. like the best financial shape you could ever <laughs> it's want. It's great because when you have a large corporation that is sponsoring somebody's relocation, if let's say that for example, there was a deficiency with the appraisal for the house that they were selling out of state to move here, it's not gonna kill the transaction because they're gonna just make up the difference. They'll put that in writing, which actually makes them as well yeah. even stronger buyers. Yeah. So, so you've got motivated buyers mm-hmm. that absolutely have to buy, yep. right? They've got solid financing. Sometimes they've got help with closing costs and down payments. Mm-hmm. Their, their, their existing property is taken care of by the relocation. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of really great advantages and all those people are in the market right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> All right, so what's number seven? Oh, we talked about this already. We did. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we jumped ahead. Hey, we're live. We can yeah. do that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the stage is set. I just, I love, I love the photographs in, during the holidays. Yeah. That The house that we sold last year on Autumn Lane, that, mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite examples because they really probably would have netted about $15,000 less had they sold in the summer. They yeah. really, they, they, they truly, they netted about $15,000 more and think about that. Their sales price was two fifteen. Usually, the commission rate is about six yeah, percent. Yeah. That difference completely covered the commission. Yeah, absolutely. So just because they had a house <laughs> decorating, no, seriously, it, it makes a big difference. And and we're gonna talk. It about- photographs so beautifully. It came, while I'm doing, talking about this, there's no way you can no, pull it again. No, no. Okay. I mean, I, I can try. <laughs> we but, photographed yeah. it. Hey, as we get better with these live shows, if I tell this, uh, my mad genius over here, hey, pull this up for me. Yeah. <laughs> Log into my MLS and pull right. this up. We're gonna, we're gonna do that for you. So. But anyways, the staging is <laughs> done. The house yeah. is decorated. And- and it looks Stage? beautiful yeah, and it people looks great. and here's the deal <laughs> this is and this is not no this is like super secret real estate stuff <laughs> buying a house believe it or not is mm-hmm. actually an emotional process it is. so the buyers are going to even be more attached mm-hmm. to that house because mm-hmm. people generally just feel good around the holidays right mm. so they already feel good they're happy they're in that mode and they this walk into a house and it's beautiful decorated your staging's done a lot of people let's just real quick though let's just uh, uh you know backside just a little bit a lot of people think that staging is literally bringing furniture into a home nope. kind of like it's what they do that. to set the to stage like what they you'd see it like our ikea or our band or something like that right. staging is actually it's creating a feeling right if you think about um, a time that you walked into a really nice higher end hotel room, um, whether it's a honeymoon or whatever the case may be, and you thought to yourself, oh, I could live here. <laughs> that That's the feeling right? that we want. I've that's had it. buyers. I have literally, Jen and Mark, if you're watching, um, they bought this little house on, on the canal and um, they absolutely had to have a garage or a basement. And it's hard to find that in their, you know, they were first time buyers right out of college from Michigan State. And, uh, but I knew that this house was, was them. I just knew it. And um, I, I told them, I said, just trust me, please, you know, just come and look at this house. And when we walked in, literally, she fell to her knees and was like, this is the house. Yeah. That's such a great feeling. But that's what and it is. It's, it's, it's an emotional it's process. It's an emotional process. And, and people build, if, I'm, if you're a seller right now, people mm-hmm. build an emotional attachment to your house. We which want is, when they walk up to the home, um, the, the curb appeal. You know, I've had clients that had a house on the market for a year. Yeah. And I had them literally paint the gutters. Um, put some mulch down, plant some flowers, yep. replace the lights, replace the door, yep. and just walking up to the home, the difference is so much. But that's why those things that's are so. In, that's why those things are so important. So oh, in, in, the, a, in the spring, in the spring, in the summer, yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a second. I think um, in the spring, in the summer, anyone that wants this great book, in the spring, in the spring, in the, spring in the summer, we talk about staging a lot and things like that. But in the ho- during the holidays, a lot of that's already done because the exterior of the house looks beautiful, the interior of the house looks beautiful. So it actually detracts from all the stuff People, that you might have to do in the spring and summer. Yeah, it does yeah. because you're already decorating. So people yeah. are so focused on that feeling. So when somebody walks into a home that's really just beautifully decorated for the holidays, it reminds me of, we used to always do our um, agent leadership council meetings at the Girls Point Yacht Club. And when we would walk in there, it was beautiful. just so beautiful. Yeah. It was always at the end of the year and mm-hmm. it just was like, oh, 
wow, I love this. So yeah, that's the feeling that is evoked when somebody walks into your home when you've taken the time to decorate it for the holidays. For so. sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you mentioned the booklet. I think that's a that's a great segue into that. Um, you know, if this if, little booklet, I happen to it's find awesome. it. We'll show it to them. Let's show it to them. I happen to find this, this little booklet awesome. by mistake. Um, one day, I was taking a um, a course at the. I think it was. Um, I don't know, one of the boards of realtors. And I stopped in their store afterwards to see, you know, if they had lock boxes and things like that. And I saw this little booklet. And there was only like five of them and I bought them all. And my sellers loved them. Yeah. So I Googled it's really, it. It's really handy. I Googled it, really it online is. and I found um, a website that, um, you know, works for real estate agents and would print them out. So we ordered them in bulk with our information on the bottom. Our our clients love these. Yeah. Anybody that's thinking about selling within the na uh, next, um, you know, three to six, six months, months yeah. I'd say. Yeah, just type um, sell, type sell. Yeah, if you, if you want this booklet, you can either type sell and or send us a private message with your address. We're not gonna to bug you, well, we won't actually, bug it, we'll email or actually, um, I gotta cut a her PDF off. of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm already it. making it digital. <laughs> so literally, we don't need an address. All you need to do is just type sell in the comments and we'll, we'll, make sure, we'll make sure that you get one digitally. And it's a really handy booklet. Hey man, that's what we're here for, that's what we do. So it's a, it's it's a, it's an awesome book. I love him. It's an awesome book. I love her too. She's You've got my back. Always. Always. I appreciate it. Always. Yeah, so now I am officially going into the digital world. You know, I wanted to say something super quick because Danielle, I know that you're watching. My lead buyer's agent, I think I already dated myself earlier that I'm in my 40s. Last year, my lead buyer's agent, Danielle, who is like right on the edge of a millennial, um, I actually like to affectionately refer to our generation as the Oregon Trail generation. <laughs> Google Oregon Trail generation if you haven't heard of it. If you are part of the Oregon Trail generation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, um, Danielle decided that she wanted us to have more of a social media presence. And she was the one who said, Talia, we need a Facebook business page. Yep. You can't just promote your listings on your own Facebook. We need an Instagram. So Danielle, um, with you know, just took it upon herself to create that. Right. And um, she's awesome. She, you know, she. So all really... this is all this is your fault, Danielle. <laughs> Seriously. And then we hired our social media intern Abby, who did great. Um, she worked with us while she was uh, getting college credit as a like a genius in high school, um, and and helped us to do our first Facebook Live and revamp it. And, yeah, it's gone from there. But now we're gonna officially have digital. I like. I'm like the queen of paper. I'm getting away from that. Yeah. I. Really I'm finally on a Google Calendar, right? So we have meetings, right? We have these strategy meetings and we're planning. I'm like, a, I got my iPad, my phone, and my laptop. Hey, I'm picking she, up my new iPad. She today. has this giant oat bag purse that you could literally carry her car in. And With she's she's pulling out binders and she's got pads of paper. And I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll awesome. take notes and email them to you. Just don't worry about all that. I it's funny. It. <laughs> it's funny. But anyway, so yeah, the book is amazing. So that's going to be in digital format. So again, if you just type sell in the comments, we'll get or one of those to you. Or message us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Message for sure. us if you want to. So we wanted to talk about um, a featured buyer today. Um, right? Actually, we so normally what we're going to do is when we have a featured buyer, mm -hmm. we're going to have a nice picture of them and you can see you know what they look like and uh, and get an idea of, of who they are. However, because this was our first show, um, I, I uh, didn't get that that's okay. <laughs> that's but, okay. but who, who would you like to talk about so like like, uh, like yes. what's let's what's it, what's your it. what's your top buyer right I actually, now i have two okay i have um a, a couple um they said we don't know if we want to be on tv today because i did ask them for their photos they're they're great um they are um he's retired and she is still working as a psychologist what and kind of they're house engaged are they to be for? married and they are a beautiful couple um, and they're looking for a ranch in okay. Macomb. They don't want stairs. Um, they want 48044, okay. preferably. Um, they would do 48042 um, if it was newer construction and in their budget. They are looking to spend no more than 335 to 340,000. Do they have um, like a specific bedroom, bathroom configuration they that they want? They want or? a minimum of 1,500 square feet. They want it to be really, really modern. Okay. So they know they're going to pay a little bit of a higher price per square foot to get something that is just um, moving condition 100% right. with a lot of upgrades and a lot of updates. So they're willing okay. to sacrifice square foot 
for those upgrades and updates. Awesome. And they're very, very well approved. All right. So if anybody's got a, a house in Macomb that matches those stats, mm -hmm. whether it's on the market right now, 20% maybe... down conventional buyers, oh. they're getting married. So they're both renting right now um, so that they could, you know, wait until uh, right before their marriage. Mm -hmm. um, they, def they definitely want to be moved within the next three to four months, mm -hmm. uh, which is great for anybody that maybe needs occupancy in their home after closing. So if so. you know anybody, if you, if maybe you've got a house and you're thinking about listing it in the spring, right? Yeah. 20% down conventional buyers. You might not even have to go through need, the process. Right. Uh, if you know someone or yourself, you've got a house that you're ready mm -hmm. to sell or you have a family member or a friend that you know that's got a house that maybe is coming on the market. Like literally when if, we, when we it did It doesn't the, have to be a ranch. If it was a smaller split level home with a first floor master ensuite, they definitely want a large ensuite. They have to have yeah. two sinks okay. and they definitely want a either soaking or jetted tub as well as a shower instead of just a tub and shower. Okay. Um, that's important to them. Cool. So, All right. So um, if you know anybody, like I said, just uh, shoot us a private message or shoot us a com you know, send us a comments like uh, I have a house or whatever in the comments. And, and we'll, then we'll I want to sure. talk about some other buyers of ours. Oh, that's so. right. You had two. That's I right. do. I have two this time. So we have some buyers. Their names are Angel and Sean. And um, they were a referral originally from... A woman who was a wonderful and amazing mentor to me, Joanne, if you're watching. Joanne took me under her wing, her wing when I was a brand new real estate agent, and um, she helped to teach me to treat every client like family, um, yeah. as well as Margie Ferris did, if you're watching. Margie! <laughs> um, but anyways, Angel and Sean, I, I would love to say that they're first-time home buyers because of how young they are, but they're not. They're actually third-time home buyers. Yeah. They um, they worked with me back in 2007. I think, gosh, she might not have even been 21 yet when they Maybe first yeah. got engaged. Yeah. Um, and it's they, actually surprising how often that happens. People yeah. are, like there's a lot of they really had young great buyers. Credit. Yeah. I think he was maybe 21 and she was 19. They had great credit. They yeah. were engaged to be married and um, they fell in love. They're still happily in love. And she actually had just finally survived um, and, and gotten out of rehabilitation from a horrible motorcycle accident. Um, he had gotten a bike and yeah, and it, now they have great kids. They bought with me, they sold, uh, made a ton of money, they bought again, and then they sold, and then they got now, transferred out of state. Now they're moving back. back. And where are they looking? Like, what's they, city? Um, they are looking in Macomb County. Okay. They would like, um, they're looking for something right around the $100,000 price point mm -hmm. that is going to give them three bedrooms. Um, they'd like a, a uh, basement, a uh, garage, it doesn't have to be a ranch. Um, it could be a colonial. They want something either in um, uh, some sort of blue ribbon schools. Um, okay. This is a live private show. Are we allowed to talk about that or no? Uh, mm, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pass on that. We'll pass that part. I'll they're, look into it and get back to you. <laughs> yeah, they're looking in uh, Macomb County, probably uh, north of uh, 13 Mile Road, south right. of Hall Road, Square in footage. between the lake and um, I would say Mound, okay. um, anywhere between 900 and 1500 square feet nice all right yeah. they, do they have a specific bedroom bathroom again three bedrooms at least a bath least, and a half at least a bath and has half. to have it a basement at least a one car garage okay so if you know anybody that's got a house that matches those stats or if you're like i they said they have if, great credit um great jobs the transaction absolutely would not fall through and because they're relocating they do not have a house to sell so nice keep awesome. that in mind yep all right well um you know, that's uh, that's fantastic because there's a lot of really quality buyers out there in the market right now. And um, sometimes the house just isn't out there yet. And again, we couldn't help but think like, well, maybe people are thinking about listing. And, and I, when we did the radio show, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many deals we put together, like doing exactly what you just did. We right. just, we talk about a buyer that we had and then someone would call us up and be like, hey, I heard you guys on the radio. You have a buyer that's looking to buy a house. Mm -hmm. that sounds like a match for mine. I was going to list it in January, but hey, if you want to come over and take a look at it, and then like right. the house is sold before the sign even goes mm -hmm. on the ground. So <laughs> it's like the smoothest transaction ever. Yeah. It is, it's cool. <laughs> totally. All right, so what's next? All right, well, right now we're gonna talk about uh, five winter buyer secrets. All right, so we're gonna so. flip over to the buyer, <laughs> flip to the buyer side. All right, so we talked about the pros of uh, selling in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, did we really talk about the sellers, so the pros of selling in the spring though? You I know, mean, the main ones are that there's more buyers out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You might have your tire kickers. However, if the right buyer walks into your home and falls in love with it, guess what? They're right. not a tire kicker anymore. That's true. That's, That's true. true. If they have good credit and they can buy and they fall in love with your house, 
And I think I think actually there's something in there about that for the buyers. Like when you get into like the competition mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So like what's the what's the first one for the buyers? Obviously there's way, way less, less competition. competition. Yeah. <laughs> there, there really is, which is what you were just saying. And, and you know what? I mean that's a pro for the buyers and for the sellers. Yeah. Both parties, you've yep. got less competition, no and, matter what. And there's some really interesting things that mm -hmm. that, that leads to in the negotiation process and in, in everything. And it's not a situation where you're giving your house away if you're selling, and it's not a situation where you're paying top dollar if you're buying. It's a situation it's a, where really it's a win win. It, it really truthfully, is. truthfully, mm -hmm. you reach a natural equilibrium, mm -hmm. and it's like a yep. normal real estate transaction. It if really there's an is. inventory shortage and there's eight thousand buyers competing, that oh works gosh. great for the sellers, right. but for the buyers, it's not so not much. So good. Now you flip the script. If there's mm -hmm. no homes in the market, and there's or if there's ten thousand homes in the market, and there's only a few buyers, that works out great for the buyers, but not so much for the sellers. I remember when I first got into real estate full time. It was right before the market crashed, and. I had met that with, oh my gosh. I mean, it sucks. Everybody was Let's like, be honest. Oh, yeah, you have two bachelor's degrees. Why are you going into a commission only job? And During the worst real estate market <laughs> in history. As we're going. Yeah, it was, that was the worst. <laughs> We learned, we learned, we, we learned, we learned a lot. Oh, is, that, yeah. is that your opposite? So your party move is this <laughs> and, and your crash move. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Seriously. I mean, it was insane. <laughs> I remember I went to a house in St. Clair Shores and I told them, you need to price your house here. And they thought, we, we want to think about it. And I said, listen, let's take a look, pull up, open, you know, turn on your computer. And I said, you know, there's over 300 houses for sale right now in St. Clair Shores in February. This is this is a lot. Yeah. And literally, literally about a month later when they were ready to list, um, Pfizer had just closed down. Yeah, it was, um, it was a couple bad. of GM subsidiaries. We went, we shifted from a um, seller's market to a buyer's market almost like, overnight. Like that. And the news hadn't caught up yet. And we we're in it. And I, I got there and I said, look, you guys, now there's over 550 houses mm -hmm. on the market in St. Clair Shores. Yeah. I couldn't, well, it houses, condos, 500 properties. Back then, putting a for sale sign yeah. in your lawn was like throwing a life preserver out. You're just like, please, <laughs> yes. somebody, grab it. It was horrible. And, it and was I horrible. tell them, you know, okay, we have to be priced here. And we'd wait. And then when they're, okay, fine, drop the price. Well, no, now we need to be priced here. So we'd be trailing the market down. And I learned the hard way. <laughs> just, now, just to be fair, I see that my buddy uh, Kevin is watching. He's actually a really successful uh, real estate investor. Mm -hmm. He did okay during that crash. But, but... Hey, if I was not brand new in real estate, I would have done okay during that Absolutely. crash. Our, I, my broker, Jake, if you're watching, he sat there in the team meeting and he said, every single one of you needs to be buying up real estate right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're going to beg, borrow, steal, buy real estate. Yeah. And I helped was so legit. many people get great deals. And uh, I, I didn't it was during fun, the though. time buy any real estate It was myself. It was fun. And we, 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 <laughs> learned, we learned so much. My average sales price <laughs> I think six years, seventy thousand yeah. dollars. It was ridiculous. It was, yeah, it was, it was the wild, wild west. Anyways, so less competition with buyers. <laughs> yes. That's 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 the big one. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk so, about that. so mm -hmm. when you get into less competition, mm -hmm. like obviously. That's really the number one reason, right? Right. I mean, if Absolutely. you're going to buy a house in the winter, the number one reason to consider it is if, because right. you, there's less competition, which means a lot of great things. This house is exactly what you're looking for. It's exactly what you want. And let's say that they're priced right at what their, you know, their agent is telling them, fair market value. You know, we're going to do a market analysis for our buyers prior to putting an offer. And if I tell them, hey, this house is priced exactly where it's probably going to appraise, then we know that we're going to have to come in with a asking or an offering price that's close to their asking price how, because otherwise they're going to sit on our offer and at the end of the day our buyers are protected by the appraisal they know they're not going to overpay for that house especially if we're not competing with other offers right. um, if we are competing with other offers in the spring or you know when there's a lot more competition then a lot of times our buyers unfortunately in order to win in a bidding war they're going to have to be willing to pay at least a grand or two above the appraised value to win the house. Yeah. And and I'll tell them, hey, if you don't really care if you win the house or not, let's just go in at full price or maybe 500 over. Yeah. If you really want this house, if yeah. it's your dream house, but, prices are going up. You're not going to lose money. But We're at the same time, the but at the same time, that, that's that. Now, now you're making more of a lifestyle decision than a financial Absolutely. decision. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people talk about spending fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars more for a house than it's worth. Well, and, but at the same time, too, you have to take into account the upgrades and updates that are done. Absolutely. If somebody wants a gorgeous finished basement that costs that seller fifty thousand to put in. When the seller is selling it, they're not getting a ROI, a return on investment of fifty thousand. They're getting maybe an ROI of ten thousand. Right. I've seen the appraisals, so yeah. give it a ten thousand adjustment. So instead of you know buying a house for ten thousand less with no finished basement, 
for 10 grand, you're getting a $50,000 finished basement. So everything is relative. It takes a really good real estate agent to help you um, do that research and configure what is the right offering. And that's the whole concept of the show buying and selling your home with confidence. Right. Right. So you you don't ever feel like you're fumbling around in the dark. It's not a question mark. You're not like like tossing and turning at night, talking to your significant other, going, I don't know. Do you really think we we should? Because the numbers, the numbers are the numbers. And and we we break that Mm -hmm. down for you and and make sure that you're buying the house with confidence. Mm -hmm. And I love the, I love the next two bullet points on the slide. Oh, Oh, that's right. There we go. Oh, nice. Because it, the other thing about less competition as a buyer in the winter is that the no, sellers are excited. They're so, they're excited to see you. <laughs> they because, are. They know you're a serious buyer. And they're not <laughs> listing their house during the holidays in winter because they really want to. A lot of times they it's, have to. Yeah, a lot of times they do have to. Yep. They have a job relocation or they're serious. Right. And so you take a serious seller, you put them with a serious here's buyer. Something that a lot of people don't think about, Carl. We have a lot of people that, because of the fact that they want to have destination weddings, um, they are getting married in the winter months now. It right. used to be almost every single wedding in our area, June, probably 80% July. of them yeah. were in the spring and summer months, yeah. even early fall. Now we have so many couples getting married in the winter because they want mm-hmm. to go off with their closest family and friends and have this destination wedding in some tropical island where it's warm because it's so freaking cold here. And, um, you know, so now they're they're getting married. They need to buy, and um, the sellers know that. And also the sellers a lot of times are getting married themselves, and they – know that they have two houses and um, they, what are we going to do with one? We're going to move into one or the other or sell both maybe. That's not a I want to <laughs> sell. That's a I got to sell. Right. And, and that's they're a not going to have two ma- mortgages and, as a married couple. And that's a tough position to be in. Right. So, so so you have less competition for sellers, but you also have less competition with buyers. And here's the reality on that. Like I said, it creates an equilibrium. Yep. You don't have a market skewed to the buyers. Mm-hmm. You don't have a market skewed to the sellers. You yep. have a ready, willing, and able seller, a ready, a ready willing, willing, and able, able buyer, buyer mm-hmm. and they're on par and, with each other yes, and it's because a they get it. Yep, right? They get so it. you're going to have fewer negotiation issues, yep. fewer inspection Especially issues. Especially when you have two people that it's two, if the buyer, uh, if the buyers have, are having a winter wedding and the sellers are having a winter wedding, everybody gets it. Right. And we just want to make sure that it feels like it's everybody it has a win-win. Win-win it's, all the time. So what's the next one? What's the next tip? Um, you may For, get a better deal. Right. You, may, you might. You really might. I mean, there's 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 a lot of truth to that because it, obviously it depends were... on the house. Um, you know, sometimes there's houses that are fixer uppers that have been on the market for a while. There's a lot of really really great renovation products out there right now, and I'm talking about mortgage products. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's an, another whole show. However, you know, you can actually finance repairs right into your mortgage, and there's a great product with FHA. However, people that want to be able to have their private mortgage insurance removed, there's a wonderful conventional mortgage product out there right now for renovating a home and if this house has been on the while or the market for a while and you know you're looking at it saying hey you know these people obviously they keep dropping the price you know that um, it, you're not competing with other competition and they know that there's less competition and they know that it needs work. And at this point, they're probably just sick and tired of having showings. You, <laughs> you are going to get a better deal. Hashtag, especially. the struggle is real. It, it, it happens. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny because you were, you were talking about um, marriage and people that, you know, mm-hmm. have, have weddings and they have to buy a house. Yeah. Um, Amy just commented, she's like, great point. She's like, we got married in mid-January and we moved into our house the same month. So yeah. it, it happens. I mean, and that's a real that's a real motivator. Mm-hmm. Like if 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 the family is growing or you're married, and there, there's a lot of things that people that have you know th- things that happen in life, yeah. right? So it's usually it's like marriage, life unfor- happens, unfortunately <laughs> divorce, right? You, you right. have more kids and you outgrow right. the house. You you downsize because your kids you're empty nesting, right? Or you know it's a probate situation because someone's passed on or whatever. Right. But those are the main triggers, and when those triggers happen, it creates a very different sense of urgency, regardless of what side of the uh, what, what side of the transaction you're well, on. Well, and you know what else? too um you bring up probate there's so many more probate listings um coming on the market that it just seems to me that you know with the longevity that people have been experiencing um people are living longer you know i'll, I'll see a, a new construction going up a, a large um building that maybe looks like it could be um a condo or an apartment and it's senior housing yeah. um so that's one of the reasons why uh, we decided to become senior real estate experts on our team. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I took the training to become a certified senior advisor because there are a lot of um, adult children helping their senior parents right. as well as senior parents wanting to 
downsize from the family home and um, purchase a smaller condo here in a condo. And um, I'm really excited about that show. We've got that on the schedule. That's, <laughs> that's like a on really the schedule. cool. It's going to be an entire episode on um, on that on that topic it as is. well. So. so so with the buyers, so you might get a better deal because um, there, obviously there's less competition. Mm -hmm. The sellers yep. may negotiate a better deal for you, uh, but the, also the the seller may be open to more options because you know if um, if they know that you're the only serious buyer that's looking at the house and there aren't four other people, they might be open to talking to you a little about maybe a little bit of a different um, occupancy situation or ma maybe maybe your concessions mm -hmm. might be a little bit more flexible. If, if you, you do it in the summer, closing costs, yeah. they might be more willing to um, accommodate you with yep. that. Whereas right now, because technically we still are in a seller's market, mm -hmm. um, it, we're not seeing concessions, which is help with closing costs. It, you know what? I don't want to say help with closing costs. It depends on how you're looking at it. So it, you know, if the, the seller has a bottom line, if you need um, money back at the closing to help with your closing costs, you're going to have to either pay a little bit more for the house to get money back right. to meet their bottom line, or you can get the house for a little bit less. So in one way, you're rolling your costs into the loan. However, if you think about it from the seller's point of view, the house still has to appraise for that price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the house is worth. And they're losing that couple thousand dollars of their net to meet their bottom line. Right. So they are still selling a home for less than it's right. worth in order to give those concessions. So there's, it's, it's, it's a two-way street for yep. sure. But, but during the winter months, Again, if the seller knows that you're the only serious buyer and mm -hmm. they know that you've got quite like like you were talking about the one buyer, twenty percent conventional. Not having to um, sell a property exactly. is huge. So all those things come mm -hmm. into play, and then you say, "Hey, can we get you know three percent, six percent?" They might say, "Well, we can't do that much, but we can do this." We can do this. But I'll tell you what: in the spring, we in the just summer, closed one. Kelly, if you're watching, one of our buyers. Uh, we, you know, she, we, we looked at quite a few homes for her and, uh, uh several that she loved, um, there was more than one offer, um, in the summertime, you know, late summer mm -hmm. and she lost out on a couple homes that she was absolutely passionate about. Mm -hmm. I, Danielle and I were down in, um, in Texas in Austin, um, volunteering with Keller Williams with our parent company, um, for the hurricane victims. And I was on the phone every night with Kelly she was stressed and upset because the houses that she loved kept going into multiple offer situations right. and you know as soon as we hit that little lull of mm -hmm. just after the summer just before all the people that are you know wanting to close before the holidays she found a great deal right in yeah. that little lull yeah. so yep. you know there's there's different little market fluctuations all the time and you know right around you know the the holidays is mm -hmm. one of them just like like then it's so. lightning it's lightning it strikes is. and uh <laughs> you know it, it, and it happens on both sides of the equation mm -hmm. so what's what's the next tip for the buyers tax motivation again so <laughs> again you know you start to see the trend here the the same the situation always gets their cut. The same the same, the same situation usually exists for the no both the seller what. and the buyer, but right. it, it's uh, there's very different motivators. Mm -hmm. There's very different situations, but mm -hmm. but tax considerations for buyers are yeah. it's it's a real thing. And again, we can't get too in detail on that. Um, we're legally, not we're, allowed to legally give uh, legal legal advice, advice or, or tax, tax advice. advice, but so. but we will get an awesome in, CPA yep, on the an show, awesome actual certified public as a guest. Yeah, so we're going to do a whole sure. show about this. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. Be but just know, as a buyer. There, there may be tax incentives for both you and the seller. Look into it. Which Talk again, to your which again creates a more a more motivated seller if they have a tax incentive, and then it for you as a buyer, a more made, motivated buyer. Again, it's that equilibrium. Right. So it, it's, it's a key thing. Yep. Um, see the home and it's worse. I love this one. Can I, can I run with this real quick? <laughs> Go ahead, run right. with it. <laughs> so in, in 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 obviously in Michigan in during the winter, our winters can be pretty brutal, right? They can be. And 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 so that creates a very unique opportunity because. When we sell houses in the summer, right, right, the people that are looking at it, yeah, they're going to do a home inspection. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and look at all the different things. And if there's evidence of water damage and things like that, they're going to yeah. know that. Right. But the truth is, yeah. you really don't the know. The grass is greener. The exactly. trees are in bloom. You can't so, see the neighbor's yard behind you. Everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. And you really don't know how well a home is going to insulate and protect a family until you're there and it's being tested by the water by the wind, by the temperature. Yeah, when you walk everything. in the house, you know. Yeah. So when you're examining total cost of ownership, like your right. heating bill, your electric bill, you All know, of that. what kind of renovations yeah. you're gonna have to do, it's actually an advantage to you as a buyer to look at houses during the winter, just from that perspective alone. From that perspective alone. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because again, this always comes back to, you know, with, with the agents on my team, I'm always telling them, 
remember who you're representing. You know, when we're representing buyers, we're, we're educating them, okay, this is what we want to look at that we can see right now in the winter. Like, pay attention to it, like how close the neighbor's yards are and things like that because there aren't leaves on the trees. Um, you know, and however, when we're representing a seller, we're telling them, make sure that when these buyers walk in, we'll try and have the showings later in the evening so they're not seeing the barren yard. We want, when they come in, it's a warm, inviting holiday atmosphere. So again, it comes back to hiring a real estate agent that understands who they're representing at all times. And, um, but it, absolutely, when we're working with you as a buyer's agent, we will be pointing out all of these things for you right. um, that you might not notice in the summertime. It, it so. makes a big difference. It so it, it gives you an advantage to see mm -hmm. the house from a perspective that you just don't usually get. So if you buy in the summer, now you're worried about what's gonna happen in the winter, right? Right, or, yeah. and then And so the, the only caveat to this, and I'll just throw it in, in interest of fair. Unit. Air conditioning unit. Air conditioning Here's an even bigger. If you buy a house in the pool, now oh, you gotta yeah. worry about the pool. Yeah. However, you could write contingencies in that say, we're gonna Everything do a pool in inspection. Everything in real estate is negotiable. Right. Everything in real estate is always negotiable. But the main thing, the house, the, mm -hmm. the energy efficiency of the house, yes. the water handling capabilities of the mm -hmm. house, those are major, major things. And you get an inside perspective of that right. when you buy in the winter. Yeah, you really I mean, do. you can. your agent can ask to see um, the last month's bills for, yeah. for heating of that home. And if, I mean, it can vary so greatly depending yeah. on the age of I've the home. I've seen some crazy and... gas bills where I'm just like, what? $650 a month. For, yeah. for an 1,100 square foot house. I'm like, yeah. that think, house has got a problem. I think the highest mine was, uh, was 140. Yeah. So. And, 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 and then it get, that gets back to the mechanicals, right? So the HVAC system, the heating and cooling system, how efficient is it? You know, people talk about it. 80% efficiency or 90%? 90%, you know, and that, that can make a huge, huge difference. difference. The window insulation so. capability, the insulation a real estate agent is going to be noticing these things on a walkthrough, especially if it's a home that when you walk into, uh, as a buyer, when you walk into a property, you know that your real estate agent that's there, your buyer's agent, their job is to get you the best deal on any house with the least amount of hassle, the least amount of stress, um, the best deal possible. Right. You know, you know, when you walk in and you, you can trust your agent, you tell them, this might be the one. That agent is looking at the age of the, um, you know, furnace, the furnace hot the, water the tank, roof on the disclosure statements. They're taking into account all these things. They're walking wait, wait, through. Wait, wait, wait. If they're a good agent. If they're a good agent, yeah. yes. If they're a good agent, so that when they're going into that negotiation, you know, they're building the relationship with the other agent. They're talking about the pros and cons of the um, the house. They're talking about the pros of their buyer selling their buyer to the other agent, and then saying, "Hey, this we're offering this, and why." Um, again, if there's a multiple offer situation in the spring or, yep. you know, that's a negative, you lose your leverage. It's, it's about leverage. If there's no other offers on the table and that seller has to sell because they're getting transferred out of state and they don't care if they don't make as much as they thought because their relocation company is paying for all of their fees. That's right. Guess what? We have leverage. Yeah, we really do. We have leverage we and we can say, okay, the house needs this, 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 this. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to... And you don't, you don't get that insight in the spring and summer. You absolutely. No, if there's five other offers on the house, we're not bringing up anything negative no. about the house. Well, plus you don't even know how the house operates, you know, right. in that environment. So you, That's you, true. you might have a problem that you don't even know about. So there's, there, it's a distinct advantage. Don't, don't underestimate really the, the, really the, the breadth and scope of this advantage. What's the last one? Um, better service. I love this. I love this too. Because this is something that I guarantee you... Nine, nine out of 10 people probably don't even think about. They probably don't. But real estate agents, loan officers, title mm -hmm. companies, they're all what? They're all slower. Right, yeah, we yeah. are naturally, we, we affectionately refer to um, March 1st through, um, you know, uh, October, um, you know, that to basically from March 1st through Labor Day weekend as our busy season. Right. And we really, you know, everything ramps up. Um, a lot of our sellers are waiting until March to, to list their properties. And um, it's our busy season. So when you are looking to buy or sell in the winter, mm -hmm. your real estate agent, who normally, you know, we, we sell 100 houses a year in our, our little team. Um, we're hoping mm -hmm. to double that next year. But anyways, uh, we want to help a lot of families um, achieve their goals of home ownership. We're passionate about it. And um, we have some great new agents on our team that we're training. We want to be able to take you um, to that level of feeling like, wow, you know, this is really the, the right decision for me. Um, and we're going to be able to give you that customer service level that's a 10 plus where we always strive to do that. However, if we, if we do have, you know, you know, 15 transactions pending for buyers versus six, right. um, it's, we're it going to be able difference. to answer the phone faster. Yep. You're always going to get a return call back and things like that from our team. However, 
the communication, the us being able to answer your questions before you even have to ask them is right. going to be um, something that you're going to be pleasantly surprised with and um, I think happy about. So yeah, it makes it, it makes a big mm-hmm. difference because everybody is slower and like she said, they don't have as many many transactions in the pipeline or whatnot. Mm-hmm. They don't have as many buyers that they work with, as many yeah. listings to tend to. The whole process is is the same for everybody it's, but it's, it's know, less volume so it's they have everything that we're passionate about doing with our building of our relationships with our clients only we can actually do it to the as much as we want yep. because yep. Um, we're not quite so busy makes so. a huge difference it really does so that's a great point all right so um that's five winner buyer secrets what else we got so we're gonna we do a feature listing but, our featured listing but hang on a second we got an offer <laughs> so real quick um, if you're interested in buying a house, oh, yeah. you know, right now oh, yeah. during the winter months and uh, this information has been helpful for you, but, or maybe you, you already knew you were going to buy and you're out there already in the market, right? Mm-hmm. Just uh, go ahead and type hot list into the comments and uh, one, somebody from our team will reach out to you and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll find get, out exactly just what your market really is. Really quick, and we will, yeah. real quick, like highlights. And then we're going to send you the top 10 best buys, Yeah. period. Like like the 10 best buys. What we want to do is we want with this show that if somebody types in hot list and um, you could type in hot list in a zip code, hot list in a school district. You could type in hot list, Lance Cruz schools, hot list, Warren, hot list, whatever. Uh, we will within um, half an hour of the show ending have that sent to you in your email um, or through Facebook Messenger. Actually, sorry, Talia, it's going to be even better than that. Oh, well. yeah. So hopefully, starting next week, the whole process is going to be dialed in. So basically, here's how it's going to happen. We can do it immediately. Yeah, no, wow. we can't. Yeah, yeah. So right now, you just type hot list. We'll reach out to you. We'll, we'll get the criteria. We'll send you the list. But she didn't even know about this. It's a surprise. So surprise. I love surprises. <laughs> so basically, what will happen is starting with the show next week, you'll type in hot list, and it'll ask you what area you're looking in, what your bedroom bathroom consider- considerations are, uh-huh. what your price point mm-hmm. is, and then we're just going to send you that list. It's send it be, right down in there. But it's, just, it's the, the top, 10 best buys. The 10 best buys. So it's mm-hmm. it's the 10 best deals in real estate yep. matching your criteria right now. It's going to be powerful. Immediately. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. All right, so featured listing. What do we got this week? We have a featured listing. It's a beautifully renovated bungalow in Gross Point. And um, (laughs) hi, Paul. I I think that our (laughs) seller is watching. (laughs) I told him that I wanted to feature his listing, and uh, Carl shot it. Um, It's 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 a brick bungalow, uh, beautifully renovated kitchen. It has um, great granite countertops. It's fourteen hundred square feet, um, three bedrooms, two baths. It's um, it's got a finished basement, a two car garage, a beautifully fenced in yard. Really nice. It's really really nice. It's in Gross Point Woods, and the Gross Point Woods. Park is actually one of my favorites of all of the Gross Point parks on the lake. Um, it's, <laughs> it, Carl grew up there, right? Well, so here's here's the deal. So I'm gonna hijack for a second here because this house is literally about 18 houses away from my childhood home. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, nice. yeah. I okay. mean, and so so when I went to shoot it, it brought back so many memories of the neighborhood. Yeah. It is such an awesome neighborhood to raise a family in and grow up in. Mm-hmm. And it's the per- it's a perfect family house. I grew up in a bungalow very similar to this mm-hmm. right down the street. And uh, it's just, it's an amazing neighborhood. So you got Gross Point Schools, you got the Gross Point Park. And the Gross Point Park is amazing. If you know about it, awesome. You already get it. If you don't know about it, holy Moses, is it an amazing park. And you can only go there. Each one of the points has a dedicated park just for the residents of that. There's five Gross Points, right? So the Gross Point Woods Park is actually in St. Clair Shores, which is kind of funny. But um, water slide, pool, tennis. I mean, it's this amazing property. There's boats. There's, I mean, it's... It, Boat wells, it, everything. It, 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 everything re- it really is incredible. One other thing, too, that I wanted to point out, a lot of times we have people that think, oh, you know what? We love being close to the water. We love the Gross Point Parks. Yeah. However, there's a high water table there. And, yes. and sometimes Gross Point gets a bad rap for um, having leaky basements and things like that. This house has had a completely waterproof basement awesome. um, with a lifetime guarantee from a company that is recommended by the Better Business Bureau. It has a brand new roof awesome. um, with three-dimensional shingles. Um, the kitchen's renovated. The hardwood floors are renovated. Um, everything in the house is moving condition. It's a great home, um, and I think that we, can, we have it. You can see the right. new roof. You can see the new roof. And look and look at that look kitchen. Look at the kitchen. What? It's gorgeous. I love it. So <laughs> we're actually having an open house this Sunday, and um, we are going to be holding this house open this Sunday from two to four. So if you are in the market to uh, purchase a home in Gross Point, or if you know anybody that's thinking about purchasing a house in Gross Point, this house is priced right at $159.9. 
and it really is. It, it really is. That's I love and I love and I love the back deck. It's because it, here's the deal. You, it's so private. It is because there's there's a big tree, mm -hmm. right? But yep. then there's a privacy fence yep. all the way around. Yeah. And then the deck, the house, there's an addition on the house, and it comes so, off the back. Right. Yeah. And so the, the deck's deck on the between. side. Yep. The so addition. it's like super private. Mm -hmm. It's really it's, really cool. And it's a beautiful yard and a great neighborhood. It is. So. It's, it's a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. And it, like I said, speaking from experience, um, it is a great place. Sorry, I messed up your thing. <laughs> That's okay. It's a great place. Oh, you know why it's not doing that? Because it's over. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so we're going to be ending soon. Holy wow. moly. We're, how long were we on the air, Carl? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Wow. It is what it is. I hope that you guys who are tuning in liked our very first live streamed TV show. I Real quick, I just want to say, you know, this is super exciting for me. I, um, my very first passion, uh, my, my degrees are in broadcast journalism and interpersonal and public communication. And I, I went to school to be a broadcast journalist and you'd never know that, would you? I kind of <laughs> fell into real estate, um, by mistake when my parents decided to become house slippers and fell in love with it. And now I get to combine my two passions, um, which is broadcast journalism and real estate. And, um, I'm so excited about this show. Yeah, I am too. Anybody that has any ideas or, or anything that they would like us to talk about on one of these episodes yeah we will be also um you know we are recording live we know when a lot of people are working during mm -hmm. the day um however um you know we went shoot us a text shoot us a message yeah you know comment message comments so we're gonna actually talk about be this? posting the show um afterwards so you, it's not once it's done live it's it's gone so you know what i'm gonna do what so <laughs> we're setting up a new website we've got a new facebook page uh -huh. for the whole thing it's all smart real estate live you know what i'm gonna do what we'll set up an email address <laughs> You Yay! should talk. You should talk about this at Smart Real Estate. Live. Oh, I love it! Yes, so that's Dude, happening. That's right. happening. Oh, wait, oh, that, that did we sucked. miss? <laughs> that's happening. All right. Well, I mean, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. Did Thanks. It, did it go faster than you thought it, it would? It did. I told you it would. I told you it would. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks we for appreciate watching. Your support. And we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs> we'll see you next Thursday at, at one o'clock. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Bye.